Home learners, thank you all for your patience and for being here. Thank you for joining us on this home learning program. My name is Jenny, and I work for California State Parks here in one of our 280 state parks that we have. This park, Calaveras Big Trees, is the only state park that protects giant sequoias. Yeah, we're spending the next 30 minutes-ish, <laughs> now that we're um, already kind of in to one o'clock, um, talking all about giant sequoias today. We're learning all about their life cycle in nature. For example, Calaveras Big Trees, and in the nursery setting where our friend Steen is joining us today. And Steen, can you come off mute and introduce yourself and tell our home learners where you are? Sure. Um, yeah, hi, Jenny. Um, I'm Steen Christensen, and I'm with the John Steen Company, and we're tree growers up in the other Redwood country, up in Redwood, uh, by Redwood National Park. So um, we're up here with the Coast Redwoods, uh, but we grow a lot of giant sequoias, and uh, that's what I've done for about 30 years. So cone collecting and growing trees and planting trees is uh, kind of what we do. Yeah, so Steen, I'm in the Sierra Nevada mountains, which is the natural home of the giant sequoia. This is where these trees have been growing for thousands of years. You're not in the Sierra Nevada mountains, though, are you? No, I'm in the coastal uh, redwood zone. I'm, I'm in uh, near McKinleyville, California. So I'm just a little bit south of Redwood National Park, right on the coast. Um, really recommend people get up here and see, uh, see the coast redwoods, too. Uh, but of course, I love where you're at in the Sierra Nevada. And the giant sequoia is the first tree that I really fell head over heels with as far as being in love with a tree. Uh, the giant sequoia for me is just awesome. I love the, I love that forest. I love when the dogwoods are blooming, which are probably right around now or getting close. And uh, so, yeah, we, we live in two different parts of the world, but they're connected by trees. That's right. And giant sequoias are very special trees in California's history because they are the state tree of California and they only grow in California naturally. And they're also known as the biggest living things on this entire planet. So there's one right behind me here. This is actually a small giant sequoia. They can grow to be much, much bigger. This one, if we were here together in person, it would take about seven people to make a circle around the base of this tree. Some giant sequoias are so wide, it takes 20 people to encircle them. So, and when you put together their width and their height, they're considered the biggest trees on earth. And they don't even fit in my little camera here. So I'm gonna take this camera and we're going all the way up there together. So you can see the whole thing. They're truly the skyscrapers of the forest. They can grow to be over 300 feet tall. This one isn't there yet. But we have some here at this park and our 1,200 big giant sequoias that are really, really tall. Home learners, all of you watching at home, could you find the raise hand button for me? And raise your virtual hand if you've seen a giant sequoia in real life. Oh, oh look at all those hands. Very cool. We have about 91 of you tuning in right now and 49 of you raised your hand. Very yes. cool. That's pretty impressive. And as Steve was saying, these trees aren't um, everywhere. And he's very far from me, even though he's also growing giant sequoias. So you all are going to see a map pop up on your screen here. Let me go ahead and share it with you. So you can see this map of California. Is that coming through for everybody? I see, oh. the, I see uh, the Statue of Liberty. Oh, well, there's uh -huh. a map. <laughs> Just lying. There you go. There's a map. So yeah, there you go. I'm in that green circle. That's Calaveras big trees. And if you notice all the yellow on the map of California, that's where giant sequoias are. They're very rare, huh? We don't notice a lot of yellow on this map. And most of these trees are in some kind of a park. This is a state park, but we also have national parks that have them. You all have probably heard of Yosemite. That's right there. They have three groves of giant sequoia. We only have two. We're in one of them right now. And then south of Yosemite is Sequoia Kings Canyon. That's another national park. The biggest giant sequoia on earth lives there. It's named the General Sherman. It even has a name. So that's it for giant sequoias. And notice where all the yellow is, everybody. It's in this one area called the Sierra Nevada Mountains. Even though they're named Nevada, they're in California. 
And that's the home of the giant sequoia. Now, Skeen is all the way up here, Northern California in the coast redwood range. That's the other state tree we have. And they're the tallest trees on earth. So we're far from each other, even though he can grow giant sequoias in Steen Nurse and John Steen Company, his nursery. Um, we're in very different climates and different areas in California. So there you go, everybody. Well, and we grow trees um, for, you know, the assisted migration and colonization. So we're really interested in seeing how well we can do carbon sequestration with coast redwoods and giant sequoias. Um, one of the reasons we started growing them was their adaptability to different climates and their ability to uh, perhaps maybe slow down um, or at least stabilize the climate a little bit. So tree planting and seeing what we can do, this is kind of like our biggest tool uh, to have a tree that not only will uh, be adaptable to a place, but also uh, might naturalize. Uh, it could be really uh, interesting as we go through changes in the climate and we have more diseases, things like that. We're finding that the sequoias are very resistant to some conditions, uh, so we find them favorable for that. Uh, trying to plant them in Europe right now. There's a bunch of them being planted up, a bunch of projects up in Vancouver. Um, but any place uh, where you've got more of a temperate cr climate, we're using those locations to plant redwood trees right now. Um, and speaking for, uh, of climate, climate, giant sequoias <laughs> like to live in the Sierra Nevada mountains in mixed yeah. conifer forests. So we are in a conifer forest. That's the habitat naturally, the natural climate giant sequoias live in. And they like it here because they get enough water here. And right now it's very dry looking, but about a month ago, we had a lot of snow here on the ground and giant sequoias depend on that snow for the moisture in nature. Now, Steen's up there in Northern California. He can create his own moisture in his nursery, but here in nature, the moisture comes from the sky and normally in the form of snow. So it comes down, it gets absorbed into this earth like a sponge, and it's enough moisture throughout the year to give giant sequoias 500 to 600 gallons of water a day in the dry summer months. So that's why this is their home. They like it here naturally. And we're in a conifer forest. And what's a conifer tree, home learners? Have we heard of that term before? Conifer trees are simply a tree with a what scene? A cone. That's right. That's right. So we have a lot of cone cones bearing. here. That's right. Cone bearing trees. And, and conifers normally have uh, green needles too. These are some giant sequoia needles right here. But here's a big cone right here I found. Check this out. It's bigger than my whole head. Well, that's no giant sequoia cone, Jenny. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. What that's, tree did this come from, Steen? Looks a little bit like a sugar pine. That's right. That's right. Giant sequoias are big trees, but their cone is pretty small. Yeah. It's like a chicken egg, huh? Right. So compared to a sugar pine, sugar pines aren't that big. I mean, they're big for a pine tree, but their cones always, are bigger than a giant sequoia. I always like the idea that the cone is the flower because they always such, look like such flowers. And of course, as you know, conifers are monaceous. So they have the male flower and the female flower on the same tree. And so that's they right. can actually still pollinate, but yeah. That, but Steen, why are a lot of giant sequoias named after males? That's a good question. And there are some, there are some really good, fine women scientists that are gonna change that. I hope that's so, I hope so. Bit. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that, well, you know, even the General Sherman tree was once called the Karl Marx tree. Uh, that's pretty crazy, um, but that's true. So, no, I don't know why the masculine naming, um, you know, I, as you know, I've done a lot of cone collecting um, and they they I would say that I've been in quite a few um, giant sequoias that seem to be more female to me. So, oh, really? So yeah, you've been so up there know. in the treetops? Well, yeah, maybe, you know, you just get a sense of something. I don't know. But yeah, when you're up there collecting seeds, sometimes um, you know, the, the names come in that weird way, you know, from the researchers or the, you know, um, but no, I think it's about time to start naming and renaming some of these trees in honor of some of this nation's great women. I so, agree. And back I'm to the down, cone a, here. Steen, I'm glad I'm, you're on board. I'm glad you're on well, board with this. So yeah, back well, to the cone, everybody. Talk about a bit. 
in the forest, the fact that uh, the naming has not uh, is not maybe accurate. So this is the female part of the tree right here. This is full of seeds. Can you see the seeds inside, everybody? There's probably some light brown flaky looking things you can see. And one little cone can have 100 to maybe 200 seeds inside. And these seeds need to come out of the cone in order to grow into a tree. And that's hard to do sometimes. These seeds are stuck in here like a jail. And look at this, Steen is showing us a bunch of seeds on a plate. Looks like a plate of oatmeal, huh? But those They're are tiny. giant sequoia seeds right there. Let me get one on my fingers. So. Yeah, they're about the size of a little flake of oatmeal. They do like a, look like a little oat, yeah. Yeah, and that little seed inside is a big tree. And just because the seed comes out of the cone, which is the first obstacle a seed faces, it then needs to get things it needs to grow. Now, home learners, you're going to see a little poll pop up on your screen. And this is your chance to participate. The question here that you're going to see pop up, it says, what are the five needs of a seed? So we're all going to have to think about these five basic things that most seeds will need. Now, there's seven things on my poll. So two of those things don't belong. So here it comes, everybody. You're going to see it pop up on your screen, I hope. I Let's hope. And that. choose five buttons and then submit it. Can you see that? Love. You're I choosing from, well, Steen, don't tell them. Don't tell them. We have 94 people participating right now. I'm Let's sorry, see if they're going to get they it. Do need, they do need it, though. Don't tell them, Steen. Give them a second to guess. Quiet. Oh, everybody's <laughs> guessing the right things. Thank God. I can see. I can see what everyone's picking. Oh, good job, home learners. Everyone's picking the right things. Hold on, we're going to give it about 10 more seconds. And if you can't see this poll, by the way, home learners, you're looking at things like love, sun, soil, fertilizer, water, air, and room to grow. Those are your seven options. So here we go. It looks like we have all the votes in. Everybody picked water. Absolutely, right? And then you're going to need sun. You're going to need soil. You're going to need some air to breathe. And you're going to need room, right? You're not going to be little forever. So love. A lot of romantics out there pick love. Now, Steen, I bet you love on your trees. And then, I do. I'm part of that 14%. I know. I'm, or I'm part of that 18% in there, I'm afraid. There yeah. you go. And yeah. now fertilizer. That's an interesting choice, isn't it? Because this is all organic. We don't use fertilizer here. And we have trees growing all the time. So Steen... You have to use a little fertilizer, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, we use fish emulsion a lot, which is a nice organic f fertilizer. Um, and that seems to work pretty good for, for us. You know, we'll use some, uh, you know, kind of uh, what, you know, kind of what we, some blends or, you know, what people would call in the trade 20, 20, 20, or, you know, just like you would with your house plants, you know, uh, a liquid food um, that's well balanced. Uh, and, and for us, you know, we, we always go with our nitrogen and our, our phosphorus and our potassium numbers, and it's nice for trees for it to be pretty balanced. So 15, 15, 15 mixes are really good. Um, but we, we like fish emulsion cause it's organic and, uh, it also does really good with the plants. They seem to like it. Uh, so no, we have to food, we, we have to feed them. And, uh, yeah. and then as you know, too, the water is really important the, you know, the most important thing to get right with any kind of tree growing or is watering, the water routine. It's very easy to overwater. It's very easy to overwater giant sequoias. You have to water them to saturation and let them dry down. And that's a very tricky thing for people to know just when it's right, you know, how to dry their plants out. That's a, that's a real art. And so in the nursery, that's what we do a lot is we, we look for that water balance and that's most of your growth comes from the water balance, not so much the food, but the food, of course, is necessary. Right. And one and last thing I want to mention as well. What was that love? I said that love component is very well is, is there, too, because you can't you do have to pay attention to a seedling. You do have to pay attention to a small plant. Um, it's different than the tree being in the forest where it becomes established. It falls into a certain spot and it's going to go. Um, in the nursery, uh, you're creating an artificial environment. And so you're, you're really kind of, there we doing go. Things. You all there see the difference here. It's nature yeah. and nature's doing all the work for us. And where Steen is at, 
it takes a little bit more. The seeds have different things they need. And giant sequoias actually need one more thing. One more thing. I'm going to give you all some hints. And when you think you know what it is, how about you raise your little Zoom hand for me? I'm going to give you three hints. So giant sequoia seeds actually need one more thing. And this thing, if you live in California, you might see it a lot in the news, especially last fall. There was a lot of this going on in California. That's your first clue. Second clue, this sixth thing a giant sequoia needs to grow can create life for a tree, but it can also destroy life for a tree. Oh, ooh, we're getting more hands. We're getting 30 hands in the air. <laughs> this sixth thing a giant sequoia needs to grow can make a lot of smoke. Oh, we got it now. Everyone's raising their hand. Are you all thinking about fire? Yeah. Now, does that make any sense? Why would a seed need fire to grow? Well, check this out. Both of these are giant sequoia cones. One of them is green. One of them is brown. This cone dried out, and that's what needs to happen for the seeds to come out. Otherwise, they're green and they're on the tree for a long, long time, and they're stuck shut. So they can dry out naturally from heat, heat from the sun or heat from a fire. And there's a big word for this. It's called serotonous. Isn't that a fun word? And these cones need heat to open. And then fire can also help the giant sequoias in another way. In another way. So let's think back, everybody, to the five needs of the seed. Can fire help fulfill any of those five needs? Think about it, home learners. Think about the need for space. Think about the need for sun. Soil. And soil. That's right. And we do a fire management tool here. It's called prescribed burning. Has anyone heard of that term before? Prescribed burns? Well, this is when we purposefully and carefully burn the forest on purpose. It's done very, 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 very carefully. This is different than a wildfire. And you're going to see a picture pop up on your screen of a fire we did here last year. Can you all see it? Y'all can see my, my fire picture? Yeah, no, it looks good, Jenny. It looks like yeah. a good fire. So we do a few of these fires a year. And we do this to help create the right environment for a giant sequoia seed to grow. Because notice on the ground here, there's a lot of twigs and sticks and needles and dead trees. And we need to get this out of the way. We need to create a disturbance in this layer and expose the soil. Because that soil is trapped underneath all of this litter from the conifers. They're needles. So Cal Fire comes to help us. These fires are very hard to do on our own. It takes a team of people, a lot of planning, preparation, and money. And notice on the bottom of this picture, there's a little torch. That's called a drip torch. And that's what they use to light the ground. And then when the fire's done burning, it naturally will run out of things to burn. They're leaving behind this. And that is open space. There's sunshine. There's soil, believe it or not. And all that white stuff is fertilizer. That is nature's fertilizer. It's ashes from the trees they burned and the debris. So fire can create disturbance in this litter and expose the soil. Does that make sense, everybody? Because giant sequoias need that soil to grow in. Right, Steen? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and we, you know, once again, over to show what we do is we create that perfect seed bed, much like... You know, we're talking about the differences between the nature and the nursery. In the nursery, we're cheating and we're making a perfect seed bed in which these seeds will fall. Yeah. Here we're sowing three to four seeds into that perfect seed bed. There's already moisture. The soil is already nice and wet and hydrated. And they will go into the greenhouse fully wet with food and with seed. Um, and then we just have to get the water routine correct. We back off on the water a little bit. We let a bit a little heat go. It takes about an 85, almost 85 degree soil temperature for them to go. And then at that point, we get a whole crop. So what we can actually do and what we do as tree growers, and this, this is true of all, all trees, is when we get the seed, we're actually amplifying the crop, if that makes sense. It definitely makes sense. So it sounds like what's missing from your process is fire. Well, fire, we, we are not using the fire 
um, because we, you know, um, as you know, the process in, in, the, in, the, in the forest is different. Um, we, we would use the fire if we needed to open the cones and some trees, the seed actually does have to be burned. That serotonous cone won't open on its own. The giant sequoia cone is nice because it actually will open up on its own. And so within a week of, uh, of good dry temperature, as you've noticed, all of the cones are ready to open. And at that point we can process the seed very quickly. Now it gets tricky though, because that seed will dry out extremely fast uh, in, in nature, right? Where you are, a lot of that seed that falls uh, ends up just drying out very quickly and never be to produces a seedling unless it falls in just the right place. So what we do here is when we process that seed, we get it in the refrigerator really quick and we get it all the way down to freezing, real close to freezing, real quick. That locks the moisture right in there and it causes that seed to go into dormancy. At that point, that seed is then protecting itself um, from losing any more water. And so what we do then is we take the seed, we rehydrate out of the refrigerator when we're ready to use it, we rehydrate that seed and that starts the metabolic process that we're now using here and so what we get out of this, what we get out of the refrigerator then is the seed that has been in the refrigerator from 30 to 90 days that replicates the seed bed being going through a fire and then winter. And so what we're doing is using a lot of the natural processes, um, but we're condensing everything and amplifying everything. And that way we can take a, a, a crop that would normally in nature produce maybe five seedlings and we can produce 50,000. Now that's wow. quite a difference, right? So can and, we help? That? So so this is a great example of how tree growers can actually help nature um, really get ahead with trees. Um, planting trees is is a interesting um, you know, has a lot of interest right now, of course, for global warming. But one of the things that we've always known as tree growers is we can actually produce trees in in abundance um, at a greater rate than the natural processes, and that's what we need right now. Um, so as we're working back on the landscape. And as you've noticed too, some of the fires and some of the natural regeneration that comes after a fire is perfectly adequate for that giant sequoia forest. You know, it's uh, the fires that I've seen um, afterwards, um, there hasn't been a need for tree planting, um, mainly because that giant sequoia is doing a pretty good job all on its own in that environment. Um, maybe not so much for the mixed conifers, right? The, that may be where you would want to get in and amplify certain trees, right? Sugar pine is a great example. Um, where That's you're right, Steve. And these trees in nature, they don't have that success rate. In fact, no. scientists estimate only one and a million giant sequoia seeds might turn yeah. into a giant sequoia. So if you all remember back from the map I showed you, there was a yellow and there wasn't that much yellow. Right. So these trees do not grow very easily in nature. And remember the two obstacles we learned. They have to, seeds have to come out of the cone. That's their first obstacle. And then they need to find that perfect spot in nature. And that's very hard to do for a seed that can't walk. It can't yeah, run. You're just, you're, you're just relying on being very productive, right? You're really super productive. Um, and, you know, as you know, there's a lot of mystery with the giant sequoias, how they got where they're at why they're why they're where they're at um do you know the whole idea of the mixed conifer forest coming in around them some of these are just interesting questions for a naturalist you know what happened over time i think that eighteen thousand years ago you know that wisconsin glaciation when everything kind of got moved around and 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 it and looks like what we see uh there's a story to be told there with the giant sequoia and i think also as we're moving forward too we're seeing you know, how the trees are responding. Um, you've got some so, visitors. Dean, I have a question for you. What do you do with all these giant sequoias you're growing? Well, um, we have a very good functioning website called sequoiatrees.com. And so we, oh, what? So everybody tuning in, this is what uh, 50 of you are going to be receiving today. And we'll show you how you're going to be doing that at the very, very end. I know that to keep you... Pay attention, you're going to have to wait to get one of yeah. these trees. So this is one thing Steen makes, and this is called a grow kit. So inside, it's guaranteed that you're going to grow a giant sequoia, and all the ingredients 
that we just talked about are in here. And Steen also distributes seedlings, little baby giants of quiz. And we sell both of these in our gift shop because we don't allow you to take giants of quiz from the park. It, everything here belongs to us. So you can buy these trees in our gift shop. And this is retailed at $9.50. So you're getting one of these today. If you're tuning in, we'll show you how you're going to do that later. And Steen also is going to show us um, this video we have going to be queued up. And this is going to be our big finale. Um, because Steen made a special video for this uh, virtual home learning program. I can't take all the credit for that. I have to thank uh, my fantastic uh, creative team, uh, Ben and Leon, uh, and also John Steen et al., the parent company, for allowing us the time uh, to share with you um, what we do. Um, and it is always a great honor to be uh, brought in as tree growers and to help with tree growing. Um, our kits were actually designed uh, from the Na National Science Teaching Association standards. They were built for fifth graders. So they're a great mom and pop project. Uh, and uh, if you can, uh, when you're in the state national parks in California, you'll see a lot of John Steen products. We do a lot of different tree growing uh, kits because uh, we like to teach people how to grow trees. Okay, so here's the deal. Giant sequoia. This cone is serotonous. That means it's a fire type, right? So what really causes this whole thing to go, right, is it's interesting. So you've got a giant tree loaded at the top with cones that are closed. They're not going to open. Nothing's going to open them. They, they're, they're closed. They're on the tree. They're semi-persistent, right? From year to year, same cones on the tree, right? Maybe out to three, five years, right? Now, what you do is you have several mechanisms that drop that cone from the tree. You have birds, you have squirrels, you have fire. You also have wind throw in the winter, which is actually a big dropper of cones and branches, wind throw. So all of those things get seed on the ground. That doesn't matter because you still don't have the fire involved, right? So that seed that falls, that falls on the ground, falls on things like this, right? Now you can imagine it's the parable. It's back to the Bible. It's the parable. That seed falls over here and, you know, it's going to imbibe and it's going to grow, right? So the whole seed thing... So what, what we're, what, so we don't do anything other than nature, other than provide the parable, right? This hole, this block becomes the soil, the perfect soil, not the barren, not the, all the bad ones, right? So you just eliminate all the, all of the negative competing. Factors. So in a big tree, say like what happened this last year, when we had these big catastrophic fires, the cones will, the trees will actually get hot enough and the environment will get hot enough to pop these things on the trees themselves. And then you can imagine this amazing burned out forest with this perfect seed bed. Then that seed comes down like crazy at this point because this fire thing is super important for this major germination thing, right? So at that point, boom, it's crazy. It's almost like carpet bombing, right? And you've got all of this giant sequoia coming back, right? No problem with natural regen in this case, right? So that's the functionality in nature. We don't have the fire involved, right? That's the big thing that's missing from that natural cycle. We don't use the fire. We don't use the squirrel. We don't use the chickadee, right? We go around like good squirrels, we collect the cones, we then do, we become the squirrel, right? We become the actual steward of the seed, and we're the steward of the seed for a completely different reason. We're going to maximize that germination through the cold stratification process, replicating and mimicking nature, but then we're also providing the perfect place for the seed to fall, right? You follow me? That's how, how I see the story. I don't know how that works. You know, to me, there's no, there's no tension like that versus word, right? There's no, the nursery is nature. It's just 
it's just making it perfect nature, not so much. It's eliminating all of the negatives and only keeping the positives. You know it has to imbibe. Imbibing just means all the mechanics and all the metabolism starts when the seed fully imbibes, when it's fully saturated with water. No chemistry starts without that. The, physio the physiological mechanisms do not start until water triggers it. Once water triggers it and the seed's fully hydrated, then it goes in the refrigerator 30 to 90 days. That actually is what breaks up the dormancy itself. No one really knows why. This is a bit of a mystery why the, the physiolo physiology and the mechanism of the embryo responds to this, right? It seems rather harsh. You will find many times if you go a long period of time with giant sequoia in the bag, in the refrigerator, you'll find that they start to germinate in there in the dark with no heat. They literally don't need, they don't need light, they don't really need heat. It's super weird. They're going to start on some sort of, there's, a, there's an atomic clock involved that nobody knows about, you know, which is cool. So that, that's functioning in there too. Um, and then, like I say, we just then make sure the water gets, like when you watch Danny, he's gonna soak the seed for 24, 48 hours, right? Make sure it's super, super saturated. Then he's gonna dry it down just a little bit, and then he's gonna bag it and put it in the fridge. And that's just exactly what nature's doing, right? It's just laying a blanket of snow over the top of that seed bed, and then 30 to 60 days later, here comes spring. But meanwhile, the seed is all underneath that snow doing its work, right? It's actually all the life forces and all the chemistry is still going on in that seed. And it does take that zero to 90 day time for that physiology to start going, you know, until you get to the radical emerges and then the, but it's an amazing thing. And so we just kind of help it. Yay, that was such a great video. It makes me want to cry. Um, so that's how it works here, everybody. Nature versus, not versus, as Steen just said, nature and, and in the nursery. Somewhere in it's the middle. It's magic. Here's, and here we are at the end here with the magic. So here's your little giant sequoia crop right here. So cute. And this is what we get. Wow. And there's your little General Sherman tree right there. <laughs> pretty fun aren't they adorable when they're babies and we call them babies what scene oh i seedlings or saplings sprouts maybe sometimes on the real sprouts little is good i like that one too yeah. yeah um yeah i think that they're just uh you know for me i just have had a lot of fun growing and planting giant sequoias and i i certainly recommend everybody get the calaveras big trees and get a good walk around right if you haven't seen the big trees uh fantastic um nothing like it right i always exactly. i always tell people they need to do that yes everybody i hope one day you all can come to calaveras big trees we are open even though um there's covid involved and uh we're open every day of the year and mostly people come here to hike and camp and just make sure you bring your mask. You need it to go inside any buildings. Um, but otherwise, uh, we're open. Come and join me at Calaveras Big Trees. Thank you all for tuning into this program. If you have any questions, you can type them in the Q&A. And I'm going to show you um, Steen's email in one second. So you all can email him and get your tree. Uh, your, and, Are you ready, Penny? Oh, yeah. Go ahead and ready? wait. Hold on. Let's read the, wait, 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 wait. Okay, we're gonna gallery view this. Okay, I'm, I'm ready. Go ahead and toss it to me. All right, I got it. Woo! Oh, ho, ho. nice catch. We nice catch. Well. We should have been practicing uh, our whole program. So thanks I think everybody. It pretty good in. though. And thank you all for coming. Steen, any final thoughts for our viewers? Hey, thank you, Jenny. Um, remember to grow trees and be kind, people. That's right. Don't take giant sequoias for granted. These are miracles. I'm Jeff of the big tree. Yay. Bye, everyone. Thanks for coming. Nope. I'm going to come and see you in the park here pretty soon. Oh, I hope so. Bye, home learners. Here, get in here. Say, say bye, Leon. Quick, Leon. Get in here. Hi. Hey. 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 Hey.